What is up, guys? Welcome to episode number 51 of Diggity, a video game podcast. I'm Jeff James. With me, as always, is the incredible, the unobtainable, the luscious Brody Faults. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Oh, just so well. Funny. Just well. Just well, not swell. Hey, uh, what's swell? Following us on Instagram and Twitter at Diggity Podcast. <laughs> Subscribe to us on YouTube, Diggity. If you're watching already right now, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Subscribe. Gosh. Uh, subscribe to our audio podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to. We are there except for Pandora, week number nine. Yeah, way to go, Pandora. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial by heading on over to audibletrial.com. Diggity, that's D-I-G-G-I-T-Y. To get access to over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. Suck it, Pandora. Head on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity, that's D-I-G-G-I-T-Y, to get your free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. Thank you so much to the Audible team for sponsoring the podcast. I just ran through that real quick. That's probably the quickest I've ever done that. That was extremely fast. I rolled right through impressive. it so we can get right on with the news, my dudes. All right, buddy. Hit it us off. Hit us off. Please, please get us off. <laughs> All right, so every Thursday we like to do diggity deals where Jeff likes to say, Pass the savings on to you. <laughs> so this week we have the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller for $45 at Fry's Electronics via, or via, via. however you would like to Whatever say it. Whatever part of the world you uh, Google Express app. Uh, and it's for new customers only. Yeah. Um, so you got you got to use the Google Express app, and the Express app is a shopping app, just for those who know. It's kind of like an Amazon kind of thing. So it's right. like Google Plus. I mean, use it, and it's going to be gone in like two years. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, slammed it. Ooh, all right. Ooh. Uh, and then the next one we have is Need for Speed Payback for $10 for the Xbox One on the Microsoft Store. Yeah. Yeah. This is your deals. Pass the fucking savings on to you. Here we go. Uh, indie <laughs> Radar. Um, so every Thursday, we choose an indie game that is up and coming uh, or something that catches our eye. Um, last uh, Thursday, it was Skatebird, um, which was fantastic. Uh, this week, it is a game called After Party. Uh, the developers of this is uh, Night School Studio, who are based in Glendale, California. Uh, so founded in 2014 by cousins Sean Crankle and Ad- I'm so sorry if I fucked that up, but Crankle <laughs> and Adam Hines. Night School is an independent studio focused on the intersection of story and interactivity. The team of Telltale and Disney veterans are applying their ex- Extensive entertainment experience to create games filled with wonder, danger, and humor. The studio's first game, Oxenfree, uh, garnered critical acclaim and won an Independent Games Festival Award for Excellent in Visual Art and was nominated for a DICE Award for Outstanding Achievement in Story and an, a South by Southwest Game Award for Excellence in Narrative. So the release date for After Party is 2019, as most of these indies have just been putting kind of like 2019-ish. Uh, the platforms are still to be announced. Um, the description for After Party is an After Party you play uh, Milo and Lola, um, recently deceased uh, best buds who suddenly find themselves staring down an eternity in hell. But there's a loophole. Out drink Satan and he'll grant you re- re-entry to Earth. Uh, Milo and Lola are now dead, thirsty, and roaming the streets of nowhere, the outermost island of hell. It's time to, one, go on the best bender ever. Two, party with dangerous demons and the not-so-deadly, de- uh, sorry, dearly departed. Three, best and impress Satan's monarchs to gain access to the big guy. And four, drink Satan under the table. What adventures will you stumble through in the underworld? Every step is up to you. Time to go on the best bender ever. Uncover the mystery of why you've been damned and drink the big guy under the table. Um, I chose this game um, mainly because I, I love the... Um, the art style to it it's really fascinating to me it's almost like like you took a coco and a like i don't even know how to mix the two art styles together but there's definitely like some some kind of spanish mexican like latina vibe to it in some essence in yeah. the game at least i gather that from that but um the art style is beautiful the game looks absolutely beautiful oxen free was obviously a great game uh mm-hmm. as you know won numerous awards um, and this team knows what they're doing. Uh, really cool to see some people from Telltale um, and also some team from Disney Interactive get together um, and, and continue to make some kick-ass games. So I'm super looking forward to this coming out. Uh, if, if that's even a fucking sentence, you can say. Super looking forward to this coming out. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I think it's just a hilarious uh, premise. I mean, you have to drink Satan, out-drink Satan, and out-party Satan, which is just, I mean, it's incredible. 
Yeah, I. You can definitely tell that they are pulling uh, a, a similar, not really art style, but kind of just game style overall uh, from Oxenfree. Yes. But yeah, the the whole premise of being in hell and the only way to get out is by out drinking Satan is genius. I love it. Um, I'm a, extremely excited to play this game when it comes out. I actually haven't beat Oxenfree, which is not a stab at Oxenfree. It's just I always forget I own it. <laughs> it's it, it got buried on my Switch and uh but I definitely want to beat that because it from what I have played of it, it is a fantastic game and I expect this to be just as good if not better. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm super stoked for it. A ton of people online are super stoked for it as well. Um huge Oxenfree fans are pretty pumped for this um and i definitely know why it looks great it looks like it's a hell of a lot of fun no pun intended and uh i can't wait to play it all right dude want to hit us up with some new games coming to switch yeah so the nintendo switch online service which uh gives you some free games uh usually they're uh, or actually they're always sorry uh from the nes era but they're arriving on march 13th and we're getting kid icarius and star tropics and one more thing direct style uh the original turok <laughs> is coming to the switch on march 18th for 20 dollars uh the first release of this game was in 1997 so uh, this is the, I mean, about as true to the original N64 game as you get. I don't, I don't think they're doing any visual improvements or anything of that nature. Um, but just kind of a little interesting tidbit to add in there. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's sick. Well, hey, um, there's Game Pass editions uh, coming to Xbox Game Pass. So starting March 6th, uh, Just Cause 4 is coming as well as Lego Batman Oh, no, sorry, Just Cause 4 is coming as well as Fallout 4. Um, those are the Xbox One games, aren't they? No. Oh, that's right, March 6th, sorry. It's Just Cause 4 <laughs> and Lego Batman 2, my bad. And March 14th is uh, F1 uh, 2018 and Fallout 4. Um, these are great additions, dude, for the month of March. Like, solid lineup. Yeah, uh, Fallout 4 has been here before. Yes, uh, uh, I, right I after E3. Believe- yeah, I believe this is the first game to be on Game Pass, leave, and, and then, then come, come back. back. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of interesting, but I assume they're trying to do something considering Fallout 76 has been an absolute mess. Um, but yeah, this is yeah. these are some great additions. I'm really excited about Just Cause 4 being on there because I wasn't willing enough to spend $60 on it, but with it being on Game Pass, it's going to be similar to kind of crackdown i mean i might as well play it i'm paying for the service so and yeah. i i do like just cause games but i like them in kind of short bursts of mainly just fucking around and and mm. doing ridiculous things so never mind that perfect. lego batman 2 that kicks ass as well hell yeah Any I, I think i might already own it though because my kids love the lego games so i have most of them but uh yeah dude I, this is some great additions. I know a lot of people are excited for F1 uh, 2018 to be on there. Hmm. Doesn't do much for me, but hey, it's there. Well, hit it up. March 6th again, Just Cause 4 and Lego Batman 2 and March 14th, F1 2018 and Fallout 4 comes out, so hit those up. So, it has been officially confirmed by the Halo franchise development director that Halo Infinite will launch on the Xbox One and PC. Uh, this is something that we actually got wrong last week, We talked, or and earlier this week, that we talked about it coming to, or being a launch title for the next generation. Uh, turns out that's not actually the case, which apparently if you go to the listing, yeah, which is a win, right? Uh, but if you go to the listing on the Xbox store, it actually shows, or sorry, not the Xbox store, but on Microsoft.com, um, and through the Xbox website, um, it actually shows it coming to PC and Xbox one. So I don't know 
how this all happened, but I, I never went to visit that because I was just going off rumors. I didn't even think right. it was on the Microsoft store yet. But anyway, uh, so Frank O'Connor, which is the Halo franchise development director, uh, took to Twitter on March 5th to respond to another user or to a user about a leak that Halo Infinite would be skipping the Xbox One and launching on the next generation. Uh, the tweet said, I have no idea what leak you're talking about, but Halo Infinite will be released for Xbox One and approximate and appropriately spec'd PCs. <laughs> <laughs> approximately. <laughs> uh, but the rumor stemmed from many people speculating that the gameplay was not shown simply because they didn't want to take the legs out from underneath Xbox One by completely upstaging it with next gen graphics. Uh, the looming announcement of the Xbox or the next Xbox xbox iteration is not helping either mm. uh basically this was something that the internet saw and ran with and kind of has been the the thing going for a while now yeah. it it was i don't know why people would think that though because i mean like well there's it, a reason why rockstar put their fucking game out this year it's yeah, to double dip i, I can absolutely see out. why people would think that i mean i i don't think that's really the issue um because when you're launching a new console, you obviously want to leave with a heavy hitter, and Xbox's biggest heavy hitter is Halo. So it does make sense, but at the same time, I mean, we never thought that it wouldn't come to Xbox One, but we kind of thought it would launch simultaneously with, you know, on Xbox One and whatever the next generation is, or at least so I did. did I guess. He, does this say that it's not, it's not going to be launching simultaneously with Xbox One, PC, and whatever the next console is? Um, it does not list that at all, but also they have not announced the console, yeah. so it's kind of hard to tell. I I'm mean, still they're, betting they're on gonna that. Tiptoe, yeah, they're going to tiptoe around it, and they're not going to say too much, but just enough, you know, to make sure that people know, hey, it is coming to Xbox One and PC. Yeah, um, I'm still betting on the fact that it comes to three, three platforms oh, I, for I us. I guarantee it'll be on the next Xbox, because even if it did launch, like, a year. Uh, if, yeah. if it launched tomorrow, they would still, still have it on the it. next generation. Abs- absolutely. There's, there's not a doubt in my mind. Absolutely. Oh. Well, hey, uh, Tetris 99 is holding a tournament uh, titled the Maximus Cup. So March 8th at 5 a.m. Uh, Pacific uh, through March 10th at 11. Uh, sorry, to, through March 10th at midnight Pacific time. Uh, there's like a little kind of graphic that they put out it says get ready to participate in the tetris 99 maximus cup online event beginning on march 8th win first place you'll see tetris maxima maximus on the results screen when you do as many times as you can after the event the top 999 players with the most tetris maximus wins will be notified and will each receive 999 my nintendo gold points um so i've been playing it since it came out and i haven't won yet so i'm fucked <laughs> <laughs> as is most of the world uh, I'm, I'm totally this fucked is cool on that too. they're doing it though I mean it's the equivalent of what 10 bucks basically for the uh, Nintendo store which is cool but um, I mean it's only $10 though like holy shit yeah but I mean we're all playing Tetris effect anyway so why not <laughs> it's a free game there's no entry I mean as long as you have Nintendo Switch online but yeah man I, yeah. It, it's cool I, I, I'm sure there will be f- more uh, tournaments coming. And I want to see, I wanna see larger... a, uh, a giant tournament in Beijing with like 500,000 people watching and a $1 million prize pool for Tetris 99. Oh, I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Tetris 99 so... is like 50% luck. I'm going to say it right fucking now. People are going to get mad and say, well, you're just, you're just <laughs> shit at it. It's not. It's fucking luck. Uh, I think there is an There's element. There's a little of bit of luck. scale. Sure, when it starts speeding up a little bit, yes. But uh, when, your first, when your it first, speeds up, I yes. am just desperately trying not to fuck everything up and just yes. do the best I can. <laughs> but your first there, five minutes no of playing. There's no skill at that point. I'm literally taking it to the corners and just trying to stay alive. The first five minutes of playing that, though. I mean, it's, it's sheer fucking luck that you don't get shit on oh, by yeah. a bunch of people attacking you. Uh, I've had multiple, multiple games where I don't even make it out of the 90s. And I, I, I've placed – my highest is – fifth um but there's been multiple times that i don't make it out of the 90s because i get targeted by four people in the first 20 seconds and i i, I mean what do you do so that, there's <laughs> definitely I, that. I, I i i'm not that good <laughs> let's oh my be God. honest here all right man uh, what's uh what's up with your piece of news here this is pretty interesting and kind of exciting i guess uh so xbox has had a a rumored project 
uh, called Xbox Maverick for Maverick. quite some time, right? And um, basically, this is the or a sorry. I, I guess most of our speculation has been about a discless drive Xbox for the next generation. Uh, this is actually about a discless Xbox One. Um, so this has been rumored by some people that are insiders, I guess, for Xbox and things like that. So it, this is still, yeah, this is still your, your take it worth a grain of salt type of news. But, uh, the name is set to be Xbox one S all digital edition. Um, so the Xbox sad, which fuck is fucking awful. <laughs> fuck. Xbox one sad. Uh, but pre- yeah, it's an overlook. That's an yeah, for sure. somebody somebody missed the mark there, but oh, uh, pre-orders are suppo- supposed to begin in mid-April wow. of 2019 and should launch early May of 2019. Wow, really? Uh, Holy shit! Yeah, that's that's. Do we do we know any, is there any rumored prices or no? Uh, I have not seen any rumored prices. No, oh, that's sad. Yeah, I, I that's really, I saw a that's few really comments, sad. but I had no no roof or even somebody from an, a source it was like a comment on a forum type thing so i didn't even bother with it but man um, i'm sad about that you're that's, sad that's so are you, sad are you xbox sad i'm sad god that's somebody fucked up there yeah that was <laughs> no that it's was not a, a major thing it's what not about like it was, the all digital edition yeah, it, it could have been worse. I mean, it could have been like the Xbox Balls Why not just or call this Xbox but... One S and just don't fucking put a drive in it? Because then you... Because then you're the going to get people one that buy it sl- and don't The know. S means slim. Am I wrong? Yeah, but we already have an Xbox One S. Are we just fucking putting S's on things now? <laughs> so... <laughs> It Xbox just, well, has released three iterations from this generation. So you got the Xbox One, one you have yeah. the Xbox One S, and you have the Xbox uh, One X. X. So the S is it, basically they have to put S in there because they're they're saying you know it, it is equivalent to this, but without a disc drive. So I get it, but at the same time, yeah, you probably could have went with a different name. But by adding the all digital, at least people are buying it and hopefully realizing that it doesn't have a disc drive so when they get it home and open it and little timmy finds out he can't put his xbox games in there it's no, not that's okay you know, little timmy's just gonna fucking play fortnite yeah it doesn't matter he definitely he playing fortnite so He's just playing fortnite and looking at the fucking sears catalog underwear section at night <laughs> um hey so what do you think the price is gonna be for this i think we're gonna be a because it's two hundred dollars right now to buy an Xbox One S. Yeah, and on sale, I've seen it even down to like one seventy five with games. So, which is pretty impressive. So but think, I think this is going to be this is going to be uh, definitely under or at least around one hundred and fifty, probably a little under. I don't know how low they'll actually go on this. I'm but gonna bet that it's a hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm I gonna bet it, boldly bet. That it's gonna be a hundred dollars. All right, all right. I I bet you it's gonna be, it's gonna be somewhere at probably between a hundred and a hundred and fifty. Um, I doubt they're gonna go really in between that because that makes for messy numbers, and they usually tend to keep pretty clean numbers on uh, console prices. Uh, so I I would bet. Oh fuck! Wait, yeah. no, never mind. Not a hundred dollars. Hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's because you're my gonna have guess. to put a decent hard drive in this. But watch. Watch them it's pull what they terabyte. pulled with the Xbox 360. I assume. Remember when they redid the Xbox 360? And it's like, you got no. 500 megabytes of storage. And you're like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> really, really take this worth a grain of salt. What I did see in comments and things is that people were seeing posts somewhere. I don't know where the hell they were seeing it. Because like I said, there was no... There was no um, work cited on this. I mean, they, they didn't post where they got it from huh. but do you they're expect saying Reddit it, to do that huh <laughs> do you expect no. the internet no Reddit i don't do <laughs> i do not ex- expect to, our, to cover all our sources that. are you are you right. insane cite that'd our, be ridiculous what do you mean i have to state where i got this Instead, info from i should believe a random comment on the internet from some dude with a awful name but <laughs> yeah i heard the world's gonna end in 2022 yeah, that's what I heard too. Reddit told me, so it's got to be true. Absolutely. Um, but they were saying that it 
it is coming with a one terabyte, which I okay. I could okay. see. I mean, that would make sense. Most things now are coming with the one terabyte since most of the upgrades here. I mean, you still have some of your 500 gigabyte consoles kind of floating around, but for the most part, we've moved we've moved to one terabyte. Um, so which, what thank you, like, God because games are way too big anymore. So if it's one terabyte, and it's like, say, I mean that's a. I mean, that's like two hundred bucks. That system would have to be, because no. it's two fifty. What's well, two fifty for the Xbox One S one terabyte? I don't. I I think I think we're looking at one hundred and fifty. I really do. Okay. Hmm. Uh, that would be my guess, and then I think it'll end up going on sale. You know, around what's like the, Black Friday I mean, and stuff. I think you're gonna see it for hundred bucks. What's the? I mean, do you, do you think like people? Um, do you think there's like a real, like, when this comes out, a hype to it? I guess like people like because here's my thing, right? I go into a GameStop, and I'm going to buy a console for my kid. There's one that has no disk drive to it, and has a terabyte storage, and there's one that has a disk drive to it and has maybe let's say 500 gigs, right? Mm-hmm. I, all the games that are on sale are not the digital games like in the store that I'm presently there. Like I can go buy games if I want at GameStop and I can go and, you know, buy used games, all that kind of shit. I just don't know if like, I don't know if people are completely ready for this. I think this is a test run in all honesty. Well, that's what I was thinking too. For the next system? Yep. Like, I, I don't in think what way? this really... Like, the next one having no fucking disk drive at all or the next one having multiple SKUs just like this? Well, it's already... The the leaks are showing that there's two SKUs already. Right. From, the leaks. From, again, it's leaks, but um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have two SKUs. I think we are going to have a diskless and we are going to have... Uh, I, I mean... Uh, it makes sense in the everything yeah. that they've done up until this point it absolutely makes sense and especially if Xbox Maverick is true you know the the Xbox sad is actually something i think this is 100% just hey let's throw it out there see what happens but this late in the console generation they're not banking on selling you know millions of this console necessarily it, this is to get it out there see what people do with it see if people like it see what the complaints are and it, but you know a lot of people like digital games and yeah, yeah. and it's going to sell great because people don't want to get up and change the disc out which Personally, I think is lazy as hell, but whatever. I mean, I, I personally like to have the physical copy of games because I like to collect them. We're both in the same boat on that. Yeah. We like to have a, a physical collection you can look at and be like, hey, this is all my games, you know. But I think this is this is definitely a step in the direction that the whole industry is going to be going here soon, especially as we move towards streaming and everything like that. This is this is just the next step. And then mm-hmm. it makes sense for him to put it out, kind of test the waters before you go all in on the next console. And, you know, it, and that way you don't fall on your face, really. So No, absolutely. It'll be interesting to see. I'll see how it sells. I think you're exactly right. They're going to come out with it. It's going to launch in May, and then they'll go hard on it in Black Friday. Yeah. I, I think and by about just Black Friday, like, you'll see it for like sell the rest bucks. of our shit. Because it's probably what it's probably gonna be is it's, it's gonna be like an amalgamation of a bunch of fucking Xbox prices jammed together in a box. <laughs> Looks like somebody made it get, in their basement. Get rid of your yeah. spare shit, right? Yeah, I mean, in like, all honesty, the size of this thing could be drastically smaller. I mean, it could. How be half big the do you think it's gonna slim. be? I bet it's half the size of the slim because most of the room oh, the in Xbox the slim S. is your disc drive. Yeah. Uh, I, in all honesty, most of it you yeah. can flat because well, the X is smaller to, than the S, right? Exactly, and the disk drive is what takes up such a large portion of that. I mean, yeah, you got your fans and things like that, but that disk drive is quite a bit larger than just about anything that goes in there. And uh, yeah. so they could absolutely make this, you know, half the size and still work perfectly fine. Interesting. Um, well, hey, uh, Nintendo Labo ToyCon Four. Has recently been announced. Um, this is a description. Experience a new dimension with the latest Nintendo Labo kit. With more games and creations than any previous kit, Nintendo Labo ToyCon 
uh, number four, uh, VR kit is a unique first VR experience kids and families can build themselves. It arrives April 12th, only on Nintendo Switch. Uh, the starter set plus blaster kit provides an action-packed introduction to the experience, and you can then add to the fun with the expansion sets, or if you want an even broader experience right away, you can purchase the full Nintendo Labo VR kit, which features six VR Toy-Con projects in one package. Those are VR goggles, wind pedal, camera, elephant, bird, and blaster. So, try to push Labo more and more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see it. And... This was something that we leaked, re- or we didn't leak it, sorry, but we talked about being leaked early, early on in yeah. the uh, life of Diggity, I suppose. Um, it, they There was some patents and things that had come out that were uh, about N- Nintendo VR, basically, and how you yeah. would be able to hook up the Joy-Cons and, and be able to use it as a VR headset of sorts. So I, I'm not overly heavy, surprised by this, but I, I mean, that's going to be heavy is. on your head. Yeah. Like if you, if you ever held the switch screen up, like, could you imagine that on a piece of fucking cardboard and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I, I'm sure this won't ever lead to any broken switches. I mean, oh why would it? I know somebody spinning around Some with a piece cardboard. of cardboard holding their switch. <laughs> yeah. Oh what could God. go wrong? On their head, yep. I'm wearing how cardboard is the how. I mean, you imagine going back 10 years from now and just seeing all the shit we make out of cardboard now as humans. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. Google Cardboard, Nintendo, you yeah. know, car, make, just make a fuck, make it, why not make it out of like plastic, like recycled plastic? Dude, this is the same thing we, we've talked about Nintendo Labo as a whole. Just make the all of the Nintendo Labo stuff out of some sort of a plastic. Yes. I, but I, I get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. I'd rather see some plastic, but <laughs> I get whatever. It, but you're Nintendo, but I don't get it. <laughs> but you're doing something with cardboard, and I don't get it, but you fucking get it. And I don't get it yet, but it might be hot at Christmas, and I don't fucking get it, but... <laughs> wow, you, you, know. you sum that up perfectly, honestly. We'll go with uh, it. Oh, man. Yeah. So next up we have uh, Vivendi uh, has sold its remaining shares in Ubisoft. This transaction allowed Vivendi to make a capital gain of 220 euros or $249 million. Well, 220 Uh, million euros or $249 million. Is that not what I said? No, you said gain of 220 euros or $249 million. Uh, Whoops. The exchange rate is unbelievable right now. <laughs> My <laughs> bad. Uh, <laughs> the shares that were sold make up a uh, 5.9% stake in Ubisoft. Uh, and this is a statement directly from Vivendi. Uh, Vivendi is no longer a Ubisoft shareholder and maintains its commitment to refa- refrain from <laughs> purchasing Ubisoft shares for a period of five years. Uh, Vivendi, which also or which already owns GameLoft, a global leader in mobile video games, confirms its intention to continue to strengthen its position in video game sector. Uh, in total, Vivendi has sold two billion euro worth of Ubisoft share and made a capital gain of 1.2 billion euro. So, I don't have a dollar uh, exchange for that, oh, but that's fine. at least that one's labeled right. Uh, We're in the billions. So, <laughs> this 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 statement when you actually read it fucking hurts because it basically says Vivendi is no longer an Ubisoft shareholder and so it it sold all of its fucking shares and then it's like, but we still want to be in video games, we just don't fucking like Ubisoft. Well, I, to That's an extent, what that is. That's yes, what that fucking is. But at the same time, uh, a few years ago, there was a real scare that Vivendi was completely going to take over Ubisoft. Just a hostile takeover, and what they did with them after that, nobody knew. Um, yeah. So the fact that they've actually... Uh, it was a few years ago, I believe, at E3, that they basically came out on stage and were like begging for their company's life, right? And so... Uh, now they've put out some really good games. You know, the the last couple of Assassin's Creed's have been phenomenal and things like that. And so I think this is almost more of a victory lap. I, I don't think it's actually a stab at Ubisoft. I think mm. it's just Ubisoft has been able to um, to 
just claw their way back up and be able to I, I, buy you know some of the, their own company back and things like that. But um, I don't I don't think it's necessarily a stab at Ubisoft and the quality of their content because really Ubisoft has has been doing pretty well lately. Yeah, I think. Um... I think Wall Street is taking a very close look at the video game industry Mm -hmm. um, because I think most of Wall Street had up until this point not thought that it was that volatile of an industry. Uh, I think they gave it like a medium rating rather than a high risk rating. It's extremely volatile. And I think the problem is – well, because the thing was, right, is you you look at an EA, right, which has so many intellectual property – holdings right. and has so many titles per year that if if one falls like here Anthem is a shit show and we know it's not going to kill EA. You know what I mean? Like there's right. not there's not many companies that you can do that with, right? So like the right. big ones Activision Blizzard all that kind of shit. I think a lot of them were like, yeah, whatever. The problem is the inherent cost of these fucking games is so massive now from oh, a human capital insane. perspective and all the shit that they're working on. Uh, from a technological uh, the technological perspective, good lord, holy crap! Um, Neither of us can talk today. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think a lot of Wall Street is starting to take a look and kind of step back a bit. Like I was watching, and this is by no means great credible news for investing, but I was watching CNBC, and one of the guys on there is like, I'm still, uh, str- I'm still, I'm still long on EA. Um, I think, uh, EA is, is doing a good thing with apex legends. You know, Anthem was a little bit of a bummer, but apex legends should carry them and make them quite a fair bit of money. I'm, I'm pretty strong on EA right now. And I'm just sitting there like any fucking day, bro, something could come out and just fucking sweep apex away. And this is like when that, sh- and that, that's what the other guy was saying was basically like, look, you want to sit there and say that they're like, you guys sat here and looked at Epic games which is under Tencent, and you want to sit there and, and say that it holds holds the realms. Well, guess what? Apex Legends came out, did this, but guess what? Something else could come out tomorrow and just fucking sweep all this. Yeah. He's like, this is just, he's like, this is an insane industry right now that's gotten out of control. He's like, where people come out here and create, you know, make their companies public, and people just buy them with tons and tons and tons of money, and then their shit flops. And he's yeah. like, we're seeing an inherent problem of quality control within the industry because timelines have to be pushed to get it out to people just so that these companies can pay their fucking bills. Right. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, Oh my God. Especially for, especially for free to play games because there's nothing that's really tying you to it. It's not like you spent $60 and you need to justify your purchase and no, it's all community based. Right. So if, yeah, you buy the battle pass and maybe you don't care for it. You don't have to buy it again. It was $10. You're out $10 versus 60. But and on top of that, you know, people are going to be buying Division. There, there's always a new game that is coming out that is going to steal some of your players. Yep. That's just the way it works. That's the way this market is. That's the, the, that's just the way the gaming industry works. So honestly, the gaming industry is incredibly volatile. It, it's so hard to bet on what's going to happen in the video game industry, and because you, you don't know. Oh, like tomorrow someone things might like, not buy. I mean, like, the next Madden might come out and someone but like there just might be uh, so many amount of people just saying I don't fucking need that. Right. I, it, it all it takes is one game and all of a sudden that series is dead. It, that's all it takes. And so if you look at, you know, uh Fortnite and Epic like you were talking about, when that game initially launched, it was all about the save the world mode because that was the only mode there. And that game about completely flopped, and in a desperation, they basically put out, you and know, the Battle play. Royale mode, and nobody ever would have guessed that that game was going to make absolute gangbusters. It, there, there's no way they would have yeah. ever predicted that. So betting on the gaming industry is, I mean, it's hard, dude. I, that's not something I, I could ever recommend to anyone, because just... Uh, even we've been doing this for what seven eight months now seven and months, even yeah. in this time period it's just been it, it's crazy <laughs> it's just oh, yeah. insane like what Bethesda we've seen in such a puts out a, a short a game period that of time fucking garbage ea's put out a game that's garbage now too like fuck man there's a lot of problems out there oh yeah and it's not like this is this is something that i don't understand too because it's it's software like you're making fucking software and mm-hmm. any other piece of software goes through rigorous fucking quality control testing. And yes, there's the cert process for like most of these systems when you're submitting as a developer. But it's like, fuck, like, 
how I, how and why do you put a game out like that when you're a publicly traded company? Why the fuck would you dare put something out like that and not yeah. expect something terrible to come of it? It's, it's absurd. Anyways. Well, and on, on that note, um, I didn't add it to the show notes because I, I really am kind of trying to stay away from shitting on Anthem, but this is more of a PSA than People anything. fucking banned? Is <laughs> no. that it? No? No. Oh, I no, saw no, that no, no. today. That was great. Uh, basically, uh, we talked about the or, uh, Anthem shutting people's consoles down and, and things like that. Well, yeah. the next morning I woke up and the first article I saw was saying that it is bricking people's consoles now. So it is straight up ruining people's PS4s. Uh, so just be very wary until you find out that it has been fixed and we will let you know if we see anything. But and just... I. Is playing that game worth bricking your console is all I have to say. Yeah, probably not. Um, so last story of of the of, of this episode. What the fuck is Valve doing? Like I've <laughs> it's uh it's pretty crazy. Um Valve has been silent over controversy uh about the upcoming release of a game called Rape Day, uh after a huge outcry from gamers and non gamers alike. Uh finally, after a few days of this odd silence, Steam has responded to the title rape day um they responded like this over the past week you may have heard about a game called rape day coming soon to steam which is not how you fucking open up pr uh i think (laughs) i feel like naming it is just giving it more attention right uh today we've decided not to distribute this game on steam given our previous communication around who gets to be on the steam store we think this decision warrants further explanation much of our policy around what we distribute is and must be reactionary we simply have to wait and see what comes to us via steam direct we (laughs) fuck we then, have, <laughs> we then have to make a judgment call about any risk it puts to Valve, our developer partners, or our customers. After significant fact-finding and discussion, we think Rape Day poses unknown costs and risks and therefore won't be on Steam. We respect developers, um, despire to express themselves, and the purpose of Steam is to help developers find an audience. But this developer has chosen content matter and a way of representing it that makes it very difficult for us to help them do that. In response to Steam's official statement, the developer wrote, however, if Steam does change their policy and it is absolutely the right to do so as a private company, I will do what I can to try and create and or find an alternative way of selling and marketing my games. It's coming to the Epic Game Store. I'm calling it now. Oh, God. It's not. It's not coming there. Um, okay. How? P- PR here's... 101. Fucking do not give the fucking glory to more of what is the fucking problem just say there was a title that recently has blah 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 blah. do not fucking they said rape day three fucking times in this pr statement yeah you could not have given it more pr how in the ever living fuck does steam think that they need to rationalize and explain why they're not letting a game called rape day onto their fucking store what is, what is hard about this no you can't have a game called rape day on fucking steam yeah <laughs> I, I it's not, not only that it's, it's a video about rape it's yeah. not just like it's called rape day no it it's is a literally fucking... a game about rape Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one, uh, I stumbled across this c- kind of at the end of the day while I was just looking for anything else to throw into the show notes, and I instantly sent it to you, and it was kind of one of those where I was curious if you even wanted to throw it in here because it, it's not necessarily news. It's more of a what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Because Steam well, that's is, why I want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. And Steam is in a place where they absolutely need to watch what they're doing because they do have competition. Whether people like the Epic Game Store or not, it doesn't matter. It's it is creeping competition, up their ass. and it is yeah, it, exactly. And for them to take three days to decide whether they were going to put this game onto the store or not, and then just go radio silent for those three days and then come back with a statement like this. That's, that's horse shit. It really is. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite is the, um, much of our policy around what we distribute is, and must be reactionary. That's terrible. Uh, we simply have to wait and see what comes to us via steam direct. Then fucking fix steam direct. Like put, put a secondary, like fucking go back to vetting shit. What the fuck? 
They absolutely need to vet shit. It makes no sense to be reactionary to, oh my gosh, there is a thousand new, like there's a thousand new fucking games that come to Steam, dude, a day. Like, oh my god, uh, out of a thousand games that came today, hey, there's one that called the Rape Day. Do you think anyone's going to fucking find that? I think anyone's going to be like, oh boy. You mean you're not oh, going that's... into Steam and searching the keyword rape? Hey, that's a, that's a strange title right there. Weird. Yeah, My let's, goodness. let's go ahead and see what the hell that's all about. Like, like no, oh, so even aside from the Steam thing, who makes a fucking game like this? And and who? Because it was about raping and then murdering women. That was the simulator. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't fucking get it, dude. I, I really don't. This, the whole story this kind of from shit top to bottom is absolute bullshit. There's no reason anybody should be making a game called fucking Rape Day, and it's about fucking raping women and killing them. Yeah. And then a company has to actually contemplate whether they're going to put that game on their store. That that blows my mind. And then the other company still has to say, however, if Steam does change their policy, <laughs> we will put it out there. No, they're fucking not. I mean, not. if they let us, we'll, we'll put it out there. How I don't... I will absolutely do anything in my ability to make sure anyone that listens to us never even goes anywhere near this fucking game. Oh, my God. This is absolute bullshit. This is, you know what worries me about this? This is, hits the fucking news. It's going to be about video game violence all over again. And like yep. This. It's, it's, Someone made a game about raping women. There's a select group of people that ruin it for everybody else. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh and God. I just... I just this I don't fucking mind get it. boggling. Why would you even why how here's the first fucking thing. How the fuck are you even able to name it Rape Day and it still go through their fucking system and have a store page? I who knows. Like man. everywhere you go on the fucking internet, dude, if you try to write the word fuck or ass or ass fuck, like it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna censor you. Yeah. It doesn't let you put it in. Yep. Uh, it's, How the hell are you able to put rape into a fucking title for a video game and be able, even just a description? Like, on our, here's the fucking thing. We I put up the after party trailer on our YouTube channel, right? YouTube.com slash diggity. Yeah. And you go, <laughs> I tried to, in the description to write, you know, drinking and, and partying in hell, sign us up. Our video would have got flagged for using the word hell in description. Really? What if you would have capitalized it? Would it have recognized it as a place? I don't know. I don't know. It li- it literally thought. would have given us a strike. Huh. That's that's a little excessive. Or a warning or something like that. So it's like, why... But did you try typing rape into it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let me I'm go back. Saying, let me I go mean, back and try. Because apparently Steam doesn't censor out let, rape or anything else. Let me let me go back and try. I'll come back yeah, to you on Monday for, about that for one. For science. No, on Tuesday. I'll come back to you on the Tuesday show about that one. No. Oh, I'll just great. make a video and uh, you know what? This episode will just be titled Rape. <laughs> then we'll see if it makes it. Uh I I don't think I'm willing to take that leap for science, but um dude, Science, I, science I, isn't I, willing still... to take that leap for us. Yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I uh, It still amazes me that a group of people were sitting in a fucking room. They go, <laughs> How do you know of, it's a group of people? This could be okay, one person. Maybe it's one dude, and this he's talking like to shit. himself in the corner because apparently he's not quite right in the head. Right. And to sit there and go, I need an idea for a game. What's something I like? Oh, rape. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? That's not okay. <laughs> That I don't know. That's that's my head cannon for it. That's fine. What is something yeah. I could bring to this earth? Yeah, a I'm video bring game a on game raping about and killing rape. women. Fuck, unbelievable. Like this is what the fuck. This is it's mind blowing. But here's the fucking problem, dude. You know Steam's gonna get trolled now, and there's gonna be a bunch of games called Rape Something, like <laughs> fucking Rape Royale or whatever. And then there's gonna be Rape some- Week, Rape Month, Rape Year. Yeah. It's what, fucking shit, man. Like, this no. this pisses me off a, <laughs> so a, bad. Apex fucking rape or rape legends or something. Like someone's oh, going to make something. God. 
and troll There's going to be all sorts of bullshit like that. There's gonna... already bullshit games on there. I fucking brought up numerous oh, yeah. times where it's like girlfriend simulators. On yeah, that there's, game. there's... What the fuck? Dude, there's games with hentai in the fucking title. And it makes yeah. it through off no problem. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to quick, do a quick, quick Google search. Is there tentacle oh, porn? Boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Steam Rest game. in peace, your Google search history. Oh, boy. That's the face of a man who found exactly what he thought he would find. Hentai Steam Games. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so we've got uh, Honey Pop, uh, Crush Crush, Sakura Fantasy, VR Do they, Cannon Joe. They Blossoms. have a literal category for hentai. All categorized and collecting all of those games and throwing them into one thing. Yeah, we've got one, one here section. called uh, Sweetest Monster. She looks to be a cat. She's wearing underwear. Oh, boy. Well, that's just a promotional picture. Yeah, um, I mean, like, oh, here's there's one called House Party. Um, there's a bunch of people in a pool. I mean, that seems pretty mild compared to Rape Day. Yeah, I mean, the closest we ever got with this kind of stuff was Leisure Sweet Larry's. You know, but this is... Which, uh, they're making oh, another wow. game of that, by the way. Okay, so they, they give... Oh, Censored visual novels are available. Oh, on, great! On Steam, so you can you can play porn. Oh, fantastic! My God. Oh boy, this is what a this what one a called time Army to Gals, be alive. If anyone's interested, it's called Army Gal. It's got a very positive rating, one hundred sixty-four. Is it interested? <laughs> I mean, hey, this is. A, I mean, gonna, uh, here's a good review. Yours. I think this is the best title by Darker Studios so far. I honestly enjoyed more than I expected it. It was quite satisfying to get all the achievements. Uh, the three main I girls are the highlight together with the diverse choices that can lead to lots of possibilities. The story seems simple at first, but there's so many possibilities here that it's insane. Oh, here's something covered up. You can literally have an orgy because of a magical magical fairy's power, and there's also a <laughs> there's also a fucking psycho wanting to kill you. Now that's diversity. Oh my god. I'm done. I quit. <laughs> Fucking shit, man. People are giving this Oh my god. Came for the plot, stayed for the plot and plot. <laughs> mm. The most fun you can have in the woods with the face. <laughs> oh my god. This is horrible. But at the same time like at least that isn't about a violent fucking crime. Uh, it's... Oh, my God. Uh, I, I don't even have anything else to say. This is just fucked. All the way around. Uh, came for anime wa waifus. Stayed for a good story. Went back for multiple endings. Army gals taught me how to love again. <laughs> <laughs> At least the reviews are... Great. Oh, what a man. what a what a hellhole everything's in now. Yeah. Like I mean really, like they just really let it let it get away here. Mm hmm Oh, absolutely. And that's exactly what's gonna be its downfall. Uh, that's that will be exactly what takes down Steam. Uh here's here's um here's uh, some reviews for something called Blackberry Honey, which seems to be two girls that find out that they um uh, you know, like each other. Her ass looks like two garbage bags put together, just full of like just pudding. It's crazy. It's massive. <laughs> Makes no sense. What's this? I get to read. So, do you agree? How lovely. Now, hold still. Uh, Lorena's fingers entwined with Tahua, the palms of their hands pressed flush together. Oh, boy. Someone wrote a good one on here. Um, it says, I don't like blackberries and honey is a little too sweet for me, but no one told me that putting both of them together could make for such a great story. The angst is pretty good. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would get hurt in a rose bush again. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dude. I, I do love some of those reviews. Those are fantastic. Well written. This is, uh, it's insane what people put for this shit. I mean, it's. <clears throat> 
it's uh, I don't understand why you would accept this on a fucking <sighs> thing. <laughs> but and like I said earlier, though, I I still feel like all of that pales in comparison to this one. It, it's just incredible. I. I... I have so many questions and I don't want any of them answered. It's uh it's crazy like to what extent people will go to for like just I don't know, like um I can see the reflection of your new fetish on that guitar behind you. Can you? Of yeah. just of like revenue, like I like why would you why would you go why why, why the fuck would you do this? I I don't know. Surely this has to be a a fucking publicity stunt. Like, hey, look at us. We're doing this type of thing to get some attention. I don't know. This doesn't make any sense from from a logic stance at all. There there is nothing about this that that screams, "Hey, I've got a good idea." Yeah, it 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 doesn't make any sense to me. I I don't I don't no why is a company would ever be like hey this is good this you know why no. why you know hey this would be great oh, from the game there's dev a side and dominatrix Steam side. simulator on this fucking site dude <laughs> of course they do oh my god there's chasing the stars holy this is rid- this is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous escape from the princess here we go. You ready for this? Adult only. No, Here we I'm go. Not. Here's a description for this one. A young girl, Rosetta, dreams of becoming a magician, but she isn't cut out for magic at all. I'm going to read it like this. By the time she's ready to give up, a mysterious Eastern witch, Zara, appears beside her. The witch claims that she is stopped by the princess herself and that she needs a big old dick inside of her. Rosetta's help to flee the city. I'll put that line in myself. Seems logical. I'll put that line in myself. In return, oh. <laughs> Zara offers something that the girl cannot resist, magical powers. Although Rosetta realizes that the witch did not tell her the whole story, she still agrees. What cunning witch hides? Why is she being pursued by the princess? And most importantly, what will happen if her heroine develops feelings for her unlikely guest? Ooh. This is absurd. This is absolutely... Uh, there's a lot of... It's... I mean, there's people in here that are just I me mean, giving this honest to God reviews, and like they're it's kind of like, hey, you know, this is too short. <laughs> the fuck! <laughs> oh my god, dude. Anyways, Steam's in a hellhole, and they need to figure their shit out. It's uh, it's yeah, it's absurdity. Oh god, there's a guy that made a YouTube video on this. Oh boy. On on the bright side, at least Steam didn't accept it i mean there's your silver lining for this but that's all i got and all (laughs) that's the only silver lining i can find in this entire fucking thing i don't uh i don't get why people play these fucking games i I, like it doesn't it it just baffles me like i would feel like why would you want to be known as a guy that has you know reviews the like a, a naked hentai game on from steam on on youtube it's not gonna work out well it's just not at all I'm, there's apparently a market for it i well, mean hey speaking about adult only material i guess you could probably find some uh, fucking audible so you know head on over to audible trial.com <laughs> 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 that, that is not a good segue at all d-i-g-g-i-t-y <laughs> And that's access, how we lost our Audible sponsor. Yeah, to get access to over 180,000 titles. To choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. And you get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial on us. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity. Do it up. Hey, uh, content like this about hentai, uh, it requires time and effort. And if you love us dearly and you like what we create here, talking about hentai and discless Xboxes and domination and dominatrix video games on steam and talking about new games that come to the switch and talking about butt fucking simulators on steam <laughs> then you should support us on patreon head on over to patreon.com slash diggity that'd be great um follow us on twitter and instagram at diggity podcast <laughs> brody's just like why um 
<laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching this right now, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, if you haven't been to our YouTube channel, hit us up. Uh, we're Diggity on YouTube. You'll see the little green logo, the green icon with the joystick. That's our new logo uh, for anyone who's none familiar with that right now. Um, and art will be changing for the podcast soon too, but we'll get there eventually. Um, I will be available on Xbox. My gamer tag is Maple Jeff. Brody's yours is what? Luscious Brody. Hell to the yeah, it is. Uh, leave us a review. It helps us out a ton, either whether it's a comment on our YouTube channel on this video specifically, or uh, wherever you listen to to the audio version of the podcast, it helps out greatly in two different ways. One, if you rate it out of five stars on the audio stuff, it helps us get more noticed. Um, and two, when you leave a comment, it gives us the all-important magical powers uh, to which that witch that just wanted some sex had of feedback. Um, that's our crazy witch sex is feedback on our iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it helps us a lot and helps us to make a better podcast Maybe, perhaps you didn't like the the way the nature that we went about talking about hentai perhaps you'd like us to talk more about hentai I have no idea we can only know if you leave a comment please don't leave a comment about hentai that will probably scare people away uh, <laughs> and uh, we're so happy uh, guys you know we're episode 51 we're on our way to episode 100 and uh, I'm stoked I mean, we didn't really get to talk about it too much in episode 50 but um I'm super proud of us for where we've started and where we're at now. Um, even though we just had that fucking discussion <laughs> about anti, look how far we've come. <laughs> but um, I'm so fucking proud. I'm oh so fucking <laughs> proud that we <laughs> talked about anti. Yeah. Oh, you know, um, it's really cool. Um, it's cool that we have people that that listen to this all over the world. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm just happy to make this. I'm happy that I can sit here on a on a on a, on a Wednesday evening for a Thursday show and talk about hentai. It's a fucking dream. That's the American dream right there. White picket that fence. That wasn't exactly my dream, but it's close enough, I guess. White picket fence, Dodge Durango, and a bunch of hentai. That's the American <laughs> dream. Right there. It's great. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we'll see you for the Tuesday show. See ya. <laughs>